Let me say what a huge honor it is for me to join you for the 15th annual David Tiano Lecture, which our consulate has organized over many years to, argue, to honor the memory of our former colleague. I really miss doing this event live in Thessaloniki this year, uh, but I wanna thank Liz and the consulate team for bringing us together in this virtual setting. Uh, I also wanna say a huge thank you to our honored guest speakers. Um, my friend, Zena Patinu, uh, Professor Cohen, and especially Yanina Mayor Moises Elisaf uh, for doing us the honor of joining us to speak about the Romanoid community of Yanina. 2021 is an important year for Greek people everywhere as Greece commemorates its bicentennial. And for the United States, 2021 is an opportunity to celebrate 200 years of friendship between our countries, as well as the principles of democracy and freedom and the inalienable human rights that our nations are committed to uphold and defend. Reinforcing our shared values, 2021 is also the year that Greece assumes the presidency of the International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance, or IRA, which consists of 34 member countries working together to combat Holocaust denial and anti-Semitism. IRA's goals are to educate, conduct research, and promote remembrance of those who lost their lives in the Holocaust. Through tonight's event, we're doing our small part to remember the almost 60,000 Jews in Greece who lost their lives during the Holocaust. As I learned from my very first conversations with David Satiel in Thessaloniki almost five years ago, Greece from the end of the 15th century was home to one of the most vibrant Jewish communities in all of Europe. Until the Holocaust, Thessaloniki was rightfully called the Jerusalem of the Balkans. Greek Jews are an integral part of Greece's rich history and they will be a part of Greece's future. The United States believes strongly in the power of education and storytelling as ways to remember those who were murdered in the Holocaust while highlighting the resilience of the Jewish community here in Greece. By sharing stories about the Greek Romanoids in Yanina, for instance, or the famous Rebetiko singer, Rosa Eskenazi, or the boxer, Salomo Arok, we keep their memories alive for future generations. And of course, as Liz said, the Tiano lecture is how the US Consulate General in Thessaloniki remembers. We use this history to encourage dialogue and further education about the Holocaust and Thessaloniki's important Jewish community. Across multiple US administrations, the United States has continued to support Greece's Jewish community and to promote respect for Jewish beliefs and practices. During our visit to Thessaloniki last September, former Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, I know was deeply moved to commemorate Yom Kippur with President Saltiel and the leaders of the Greek Jewish community by lighting candles at the Jewish Museum's Hall of Names, honoring the tens of thousands of Thessaloniki Jews who lost their lives during the Holocaust. And last month, on International Holocaust Remembrance Day, his very first day in office, my boss, Secretary of State Blinken, recorded a video message in which he shared the deeply personal meaning of this day for him as the stepson of a Holocaust survivor rescued by American troops at the end of the Second World War. As Secretary Blinken said, it is so important that we speak the truth about the past to protect the facts when others try to distort or trivialize Holocaust crimes, and to seek justice for the survivors and their families. The United States strongly supports Greece as it undertakes the IRA presidency this year. As I recently discussed with Deputy Prime Minister Picromenos and with Foreign Minister Dendias, we look forward to working with the Greek government to support all aspects of their presidency and all efforts to combat anti-Semitism and intolerance. In the same spirit, we are eagerly awaiting Parliament's approval of the legislation necessary to begin construction on the Holocaust Museum in Thessaloniki, an issue I have followed closely from my arrival, along with Governor Gigi Kostas, Mayor Zervas, and former Mayor Boutadis. The museum will tell the story of the Thessaloniki Jews who perished in the Holocaust 
and teach tolerance and diversity, values that are more important than ever. In this respect, it can become a center for teaching, but also contribute to tourism and the Thessaloniki economy by highlighting this city's special history. The U.S. Embassy and the Consulate strongly support Holocaust education in Greece. We are proud that the Greek Ministry of Defense agreed to share its Holocaust archives with the U.S. Holocaust Memorial Museum in Washington, and that we're collaborating to retrieve and exhibit personal items belonging to Jewish refugees who perished in the 1946 Athena shipwreck. Important partnerships like these promote the values that our democracies share, showing that the peoples of the United States and Greece stand together against hate and intolerance in all its forms. So in the spirit of education and remembrance, I'm so proud to welcome my friend, Mayor Elisaf, Ms. Batinu, and Professor Cohen to speak to us about the Romanos of Yanina, the oldest Jewish community in Europe and a city that I've been proud to get to know over my time in this country. I'm deeply honored to be here and to contribute our small part to remembering and bearing witness to those whose lives were cut short by the Holocaust. Our commitment is as strong as ever to preventing atrocities like the Holocaust from ever happening again. Evharistopoli. Thank you so much, Ambassador. Um, and now I'd like to turn the floor to Mr. David Saltiel for a brief introduction. David Ms. Saltiel, excuse me, is the president of the Jewish community here in Greece. This is a role he's held since 2001, and he holds the same role here in Thessaloniki. He's also the vice chair of the World Jewish Congress. David, the floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, good evening. Uh... Ambassador Payat, Elizabeth Lee, Consul General in Thessaloniki. Hello to Jeanette Batinu, to Mimis Cohen, founding member of the American Friends of Jewish Museum of Greece, Dr. Moises Elisaf, a good friend, mayor of Yanina. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a pleasure and an honor for me to participate in the 15th annual lecture in memory of David Tiano, organized by the United States Embassy in Athens and the Consulate General of the United States in Thessaloniki. The pandemic has forced these year's events to be held virtually, but this does not diminish their importance at all. In fact, the use of digital platforms provides an opportunity to have speakers from different locations around the world and convey to a greater and wider audience the need to remain vigilant against intolerance, bigotry, and prejudice. Unfortunately, decades after the end of World War II, it is clear that antisemitism is still a problem for humanity. In spite of the crimes, the evidence, the studies on different aspects of the Holocaust, antisemitism is growing at an alarming rate. Each year, the Tiano Lecture is an event that provides the opportunity to explicitly express our commitment to actions to counter antisemitism hate speech, dispersion, and hatred of any kind. These annual well thought out lectures also help in underlining the importance of emphasizing, especially towards the younger generation, the necessity to reject stereotyping and in contrast, being respectful, ethical, to view diversity as a plus not as a threat. At the same time, today's event gives us the chance to acknowledge the diversity that exists within the Greek Jewry. The Romaniots coexisted for centuries side by side with the Sephardic and Eskenazi Jews. They constitute an unique branch of Judaism 
a millennia old population. The Romagnots, despite the fact that they were almost totally decimated by the Nazis during the Holocaust, they maintained their traditions and today they have the distinctions of being the longest continuous Jewish presence in the Europe, in the European diaspora. I would like to extend my warm thanks on behalf of the Greek Jewry, of the Greek Jewish community of Thessaloniki in particular, to the invited speakers, Ms. Janet Batinu, Professor Mimis Cohen, and Dr. Moises Elisaf. To conclude my remarks, I would like to express my gratitude to Ambassador Jeffrey Payat and to Consul General Elizabeth Lee for their persistent support to the not at all easy task of laboring to remind to everyone the painful and extremely harmful consequences of Nazism, fascism, or any other similar ideology. I thank you very much. And uh, Ambassador uh, Payat, I want to extend also an invitation for Anthony Brinkel, your, your foreign minister. You know that uh, I was a good friend with his father. Uh, I was invited to his house in Paris. And so uh, as uh, the previous foreign minister came to visit us, I would be uh, delighted to receive the new foreign minister here in Thessaloniki. So thank you very much, Ambassador, and look forward to seeing you in a better times. Thank you. Likewise. Thank you, David. Thank you so much, Mr. Saltiel, for that introduction. Um, so now it's my pleasure to introduce our speakers today. So I'd like to share a little bit about them before beginning. Ms. Zanet Batinu is the director of the Jewish Museum of Greece. She studied archaeology at the University of Yanina and took part in many excavations and research programs. She's also a member of the Romaniote Jewish community, as well as one of the IRA delegates for Grace this year. Under her leadership, the museum initiated Holocaust education in Greece in 2001 and remains at the forefront of educational initiatives and actions. Our next speaker, Dr. Mimis Cohen, was born and raised in Athens, Greece. He is a professor of the Division of Plastic Reconstructive and Cosmetic Surgery at the University of Illinois, Chicago, and served for 31 years as chief of this division. Dr. Cohen is a founding member of the American Friends of the Jewish Museum of Greece and has lectured extensively on the history of Greek Jews and the Holocaust and other topics over the past 20 years. Finally, last but not least, Mayor Moises Elisaf is the mayor of Yanina, and he is the first Jewish mayor to ever be elected in Greece. Prior to his election, Mayor Elisaf repeatedly served in various municipal roles. For 17 consecutive years, he also served as president of the Israeli community of Yanina and is a member of the board of the Jewish community of Greece. He is a trained physician and a graduate of the medical school of the University of Athens and was a professor of internal medicine at the Medical School of the University of Yanina. So now I'd like to turn the floor over to Ms. Sanit Batinu, director. Thank you very much. I'm going to start by sharing my screen. I hope that's visible. Your Excellency, Dear officiants, my fellow speakers, dear friends, it is an honor for me to address you tonight on the special occasion of the 15th David Tiano Lecture, and I kindly thank the Consul General, Miss Elizabeth Lee, for inviting me. I want to mention that I'm also very moved by this honor, as I'm married to one of the descendants of the Tiano family, Isidoros Tiano, and my three children share the same surname with David Tiano. Among the diasporic Jewish traditions, the one known as Romaniot holds a special place. Inscriptions, travelers' accounts, historical and archaeological sources 
bear witness to the fact that Roman your Jews have created the most ancient settlements on European soil and maintained an inter uninterrupted presence in Greece since Hellenistic times in the late fourth century before common era. They adopted the Greek language and incorporated Hebrew words into it, thereby producing the Judeo-Greek idiom. They combined their own ways and customs with local traditions to create the unique Greek Jewish tradition with its special characteristics in diet, dress, and crafts. They maintained their religious identity, building synagogues as early as the first century before common era and kept Hebrew as their language of worship. Until the 15th century, the Romaniot were the great majority of the Jewish population of Greece. When the Sephardim arrived, however, many of the less populous Romaniot communities were culturally assimilated by the newcomers. Nevertheless, the Romaniot population remained in the majority in Epirus, central Greece, Patra, Chania, until the Second World War. Ioannina has unquestionably been the center of the Romaniot tradition throughout the centuries. It is my hometown where I was born, grew up, and attended school and university. It is therefore my great pleasure to invite you to join me tonight for a virtual walk through the narrow streets of the old town, the castle, and the burrows near the lake where the Jews of Ioannina lived. Our travel in time will be illustrated by selected items from the collections and the archives of the Jewish Museum of Greece. The museum was founded 44 years ago and at the heart of its mission lies the research and presentation of the history and the tradition of the timeless and multifaceted features of the Greek Jewish communities. Ioannina became a significant urban center during the 8th century and probably attracted Jews from neighboring towns and settlements. The first clear historical reference to a Jewish population in the city may be found in a chrysovulon issued by Andronicus II Paleologos in the early 14th century. In 1431, Ioannina became part of the Ottoman Empire, where the Jews mostly practiced their religion without hindrance and enjoyed some commercial privileges. During the 16th century, a small number of Sephardic Jews settled in Ioannina and were assimilated into the local Romaniot population, whose numbers swelled further with the arrival of co-religionists from southern Italy and Sicily. The city and the Jewish community of Ioannina flourished and the population increased under Ali Pasha in the early 19th century. Most Romaniot Jews were involved in trade as peddlers, merchants, or owners of small shops in the market, mostly family businesses with father in charge. It was at this time that the Jewish neighborhood spread outside the castle. The synagogue is the center of a Jewish community and a place of communal prayer and study. The old synagogue, Kahal Kadosh Yashan, in the Jewish quarter within the castle walls has known several building phases. The most extensive construction work was carried out in 1829 and gave the synagogue its present form. The new synagogue, Kahal Kadosh Hadash, was built a little later in present-day Yosef Elia Street by Jews from Italy and Sicily, uh, but it was completely destroyed during World War II. Artifacts made for use in the synagogues of Ioannina bear the unmistakable stamp of the local civil work and are recognized as outstanding works of art. The Rimonim from Ioannina, crafted in the course of the 18th and 19th century, can certainly be considered as such. Rimonim, from the Hebrew word meaning pomegranates, were made to decorate the wooden staves of the Torah scroll and to emphasize the spiritual fertility and life of the Torah. This pair of Torah finials represents the earlier type of Rimonim from Ioannina and was donated to the synagogue in the year 5524, meaning 1764. The particular Romaniot custom of consecrating silver dedicatory plaques to the synagogue was well practiced throughout the centuries in the Romaniot community of Ioannina. They are referred to as tachshitim, meaning ornaments, or shadayot, from the inscription El Shaddai, commonly translated as God Almighty. This shadaya is the earliest known dedicatory plaque from Ioannina and represents the type favored during the 17th and 18th centuries. The famous Megillot of Ioannina contained in their exquisite silver 
or silver guilt cases, I'm sorry, or silver of, or parcel guilt cases, pardon me, constitute a significant category of the Romaniote material culture. The Megillat Esther comprises the book of Esther, which tells us the story of the salvation of the Babylonian Jews by the Jewish queen Esther from the plot of a court official in the fifth century before common era. To commemorate the historical event, the biblical narrative demanded its joyful celebration and exchange of gifts. During the holiday called Purim, meaning in Hebrew lots, which for this year is celebrated tonight. This case is one of the few extant Megillot from the early 19th century, which enclose a parchment scroll decorated with floral and geometric designs, expressive and characteristic for the Balkans. The Romano Jews used colloquial Greek as the language of communication in their everyday lives since Hellenistic times. They wrote it with Hebrew characters and imported Hebrew words and phrases into it, Hellenizing the Hebrew syntax and lexical features. This led to the birth of the Judeo-Greek idiom, aspects of which have survived to our days. This manuscript page was found inside a printed 19th century prayer book belonging to the Kofina family from Ioannina. It contains instructions for the eve of Pesach, the Jewish Passover, in Judeo-Greek. Anthologies of festive liturgical songs from Ioannina, which were chanted in the community on Shabbat and holidays, survived in a small number of manuscripts. This unique booklet, with a choice of popular Hebrew PUT, Piyutim was copied by the young man Elia Meir in a period of five months during the winter of 1853-54. His artistically designed colophon on the cover is written in Hebrew on the outer ring of the concentric circles. The observance of the Sabbath day is one of the most fundamental requirements of Judaism. Shabbat is devoted to prayer, study of the law, and abstinence from any form of, prod of productive work. The Romaniot women of Ioannina were renowned housewives who kept their homes clean and tidy. Every Friday afternoon, they whitewashed their courtyards and set out the best embroidery and linen. Men went to the synagogue to pray and then home for the Shabbat meal, before which they blessed their children. On the morning of the Sabbath day, a Christian neighbor would light the oil lamp in Jewish homes and bring calls for the brazier in winter months. Weather permitting, the Romano Jews of Ioannina would go for walks by the lake or for outings to the countryside. In the early 20th century, the Ottoman Empire was plagued by political unrest and separatist movements. There was an urgent need for modernization in education and opportunities for work. These needs were addressed by the foundation of the schools and technical workshops of the Alliance Israelite Universelle, an international Jewish organization founded in 1860 in Paris, proposing a strong Western-oriented innovative education. However, despite all efforts for modernization, excuse me, some of the city's 4,000 Jews gave into the general tendency of the times and emigrated to Palestine or the USA, seeing this as a solution to their problems. This account book of the Alliance Israelite Universelle written in French and covering the time period from June 1905 till January 1907 contains lists of expenses for the construction of the Alliance School in Ioannina. Built opposite the new synagogue in Max Nordau, later Yosef Elia Street, it provided both a secular and a Jewish education for boys and girls alike. Ioannina became part of the Greek state after the successful ending of the Balkan Wars. The Jews of the city played an active part in the social and political life of the local society. At the, time, at the same time, they also maintained their Jewish identity through particular aspects of everyday life. In 1928, my paternal grandparents, Nina Yakoel and Mordochai Batinos of blessed memory, were married in Ioannina. Soon after, they took up residence in Southern Albania, where the Batino family owned shops importing and trading cloth in several cities. As a young couple, they received a visit from a Jewish official of the US consulate in Thessaloniki, who was traveling with his cousin around towns in Greece and Albania, checking on the welfare of young Jewish couples, among other duties. 
These two men brought with them a lovely and thoughtful gift still in the possession of my family and their names were David and Nino Tiano. This story is by now family lore, but it checks out at least time-wise as David Tiano worked at the US consulate from 1920 till his execution by the Nazis in early 1942. It certainly proves beyond doubt that we do live in a small world. When the Axis forces gained control and occupied Greece, Ioannina came under Italian administration, which was moderately complacent towards the Jews of the town. In July 1943, a German division arrived and took charge of the city. On 25th March 1944, about 1,870 Jews were taken through the snow in covered trucks via Tricala to Larissa, and from there they were crammed onto trains and transported to Auschwitz. 92% of the Romanian Jews of Ioannina were exterminated in the Nazi camps. In light of the incoming Greek German ship of IRA, the International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance, I've been asked to say a few words about this international uh, force of 34 member countries that aims to unite governments and experts to strengthen, advance and promote Holocaust education, remembrance and research worldwide and to uphold the commitment of a world that remembers the Holocaust, of a world without genocide. It has been my honor to, to have participated in the biannual meetings of the IRA since the very first one in Stockholm in 2000 as a member of the Greek national delegation, serving in the Museums and Memorials Working Group and chairing it in 2014 during the British Chairmanship. In the past 20 years, the Jewish Museum of Greece initiated Holocaust education in our country and works with the Ministry of Education at the forefront of relevant initiatives and actions, pioneering effective programs for Holocaust education and research. When the Second World War II, I'm sorry, when the Second World War ended, the Jewish community of Ioannina numbered 181 souls. Many of the survivors emigrated to the USA or Israel, but never lost touch with their hometown maintaining the sense of belonging and community spirit which common roots produce. Romanio Jews whose ancestral home is in Ioannina still maintain links with their past, keeping alive the awareness of their centuries long and unique heritage. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing that very powerful personal narrative, as well as taking us on really a journey through Yanina. I could almost feel the cobblestones beneath my feet um, as you were you were describing uh, the atmospherics. So, so thank you so much. And also thank you for all of your service uh, over the years on behalf of IRA. Uh, that's really um, it's very admirable. And, uh, and we look forward to your participation this year. So thank you again. Um, I'd like to turn the floor now to Dr. Mimi Cohen. Please, sir, you have the floor. Thank you. Thank you very much, Consul General Lee, Ambassador Payet, President and dear friend, uh, David Saltiel, ladies and gentlemen, greetings from Chicago. I would like to thank uh, the organizers for including me in the 15th Tiano Memorial Lecture. It is truly an honor to follow the footsteps of a respected group of past speakers and thank you again. Um, I happen to be one of the few remaining uh, Romagno Jews from both sides of my family. But interestingly enough, uh, many people in the United States are still not aware of the existence of Greek Jews. Certainly a Greek speaking Romagno Jew sounds very exotic. When I first came to Chicago, 
Greek Americans would ask me, name is Cohen, but what was your Greek name? Koenakis, Koenopoulos? Uh, and American Jews did not believe I was Jewish enough since I did not speak Yiddish. But the best encounter was this with a Greek professor of surgery who was born in Turkey and immigrated at a young age to the States. When I went to his office to introduce myself, he looked at me and in a surprised tone, he said, Mimi is Cohen, a Greek Jew, Kiri Eleison, God have mercy. And he crossed himself. I will not talk to you about Ellis Island since I came from Greece many decades later. There were, of course, many Jews from Greece that immigrated uh, with the first wave in the beginning of the 20th century, among them Jews from uh, Ioannina, Romano Jews. It is said that um, Romano Jews were not considered back then authentic Jews. And when a Jewish man from Yanina was killed in an industrial accident, the Ashkenazi Jews refused to give him a religious burial and the Sephardic Jews made a one-time exception. Thus, Romano Jews were forced to start their own burial societies and soon after built a synagogue. Actually, in the late 1920s, there were three Romano uh, synagogues in, uh, around New York. The one remaining, Kehila Kedosha Yanina, uh, is uh, the only uh, standing uh, Romagnot synagogue in America and the only outside Greece, with the exception of the two Romagnot synagogues in Israel. The synagogue still remains an important religious and cultural center in New York City. In, among other things, in the great photo collection, one can follow the transformation of the poor early immigrants to American citizens. The sisterhood was organized over 30, 90 years ago, working closely to maintain traditions and support the synagogue and the community. The man's organization, the Pashas, and if you wonder why on earth they selected a Turkish title, the answer is simple. That Pasha used to be a term of endearment and affection for boys in the whole country. I still remember growing up in Greece, being addressed as Pashamo by some elders. There have been several successful and prominent individuals of Romano descent over the years, but time only permits to feature very few. By far, the most academically recognized is Ray Dalvin or Rachel Dalvin, who was born in Preveza, a sister city of Yanena, and immigrated to the United States at a very young age. She visited Yanina in the 30s and spent a lot of time there. As a result, uh, she had uh, the opportunity to meet people and understand uh, firsthand uh, what was happening in uh, Yanina before the war. She also visited after the war. As a result of her trips uh, and her extensive um, searches, uh, she presented this incredible book, uh, The Jews of Yanina, uh, which was published in the early 90s, but still remains a seminal book uh, on uh, the Jews of uh, Ioannina. She includes detailed information about history, traditions, liturgy, yearic cycle, cultures, customs, folk beliefs, and even musical scores, uh, and many Jewish hymns from Ioannina. She also includes stories from the Holocaust and the aftermath. But Ray Dalvin was a very important person, not just because she, uh, about the book on uh, Jews of Yanina. She was named a cultural ambassador between the United States and Greece uh, for several of her uh, translations 
of Greek poets into English. Among them, uh, the first translation of Tavafi, of Ritsos, of Josef Elia, and after her death, uh, the book of the Daughters of um, uh, Sappho was uh, published, uh, which included female Greek poets. My dear cousin, Michael Matzas, uh, he was a prominent dentist. Uh, he was born in Yarena, a prominent dentist in the DC area until he retired. And uh, uh, by that time, he, st he started his search, which resulted in the publication of uh, this book, uh, The Illusion of, Sav of uh, Safety. This is a unique book because it's based on actual research of State Department and OSS wartime archives. And it is the very first to point out that despite ample and detailed documentation and information available to the US government regarding the problems and, and the plans for extermination of the Jews in Greece, no real action was taken. Most impressive for their humanita humanitarian spirit are the results, uh, uh, the reports of the American Council in Istanbul, Mr. Berry, who continuously made desperate appeals to his superiors to urgently act and possibly save Jews from their horrible fate. The British government as well had detailed knowledge since 1942 for the German plans of final uh, uh, solution, but overall remained silent and did not act. Interestingly enough, in one of the book pages, there is a story about uh, David Tiano, how he was arrested, uh, tortured uh, with Emmanuel Carasso, and uh, he was uh, killed in early 1942, together with Cazes, who was a former mini uh, member of the Greek parliament. Another prominent uh, um, young man, I would say, is Alexander Moises. Uh, he is an engineer and computer specialist by training. Um, he was fortunate to find uh, um, uh, material that his late uncle, late grand uncle, Nisim Levis, who was a physician by training, but a, a photographer, uh, amateur photographer, he was collecting beautiful photographs. At the time, the photographs were glass plates. He was able to find uh, about 500 glass plates, uh, and uh, some of them had some um, uh, information, but most of them did not have too much information. And the beauty of the book that he prepared is not just uh, the inclusion of all these incredible photographs that depict nicely the life in uh, Ioannina uh, during the early 20s and 30s, but the captions around every picture, so to speak, the story behind the story. This book was so successful that received the high award from the Greek Academy a couple of years ago. But uh, let me spend some minutes now and talk to you about uh, the American Friends of the Jewish Museum of Greece. We were organized to provide financial support and raise awareness for the Jewish Museum of Greece, to promote uh, the history and, uh, uh, of, of the Jews of Greece, uh, to sponsor visitors' exhibits in, uh, of, of the Jews of Greece, uh, to sponsor visitors' exhibits in collaboration with the museum and commemorate the Holocaust, among others. In preparation for this uh, lecture today, I reviewed my archives uh, and I reminded myself uh, that we, the American friends of the Jewish Museum of Greece, were actually organized before the Greek friends of the Jewish Museum of Greece uh, in, back in 1982. And this was uh, thanks to this man, Molfetas, uh, who uh, became friends uh, with the director at the time uh, of the museum, Nikos Stavroulakis. He immediately realized that this museum needed a lot of support and help. Uh, so with some uh, dedicated friends, 
he organized the American Friends of the Museum. And since then, uh, um, we started with some small uh, benefits uh, uh, to collect some money. As you can see here, that's the Hanukkah party in 86 uh, in uh, uh, New York, a totally Greek party with Greek food and dancing. Um, but then we were instrumental in uh, um, coordinating for the first ever um, Holocaust Remembrance Day in the capital of the United States in 1986. And Greece was featured as the first country. This became an annual event, but Greece was the first country. Back then, uh, it is amazing uh, if you go back in the newsletters to see the amount of people that enthusiastically joined the organization, including prominent people at the time, like uh, the late um, Archbishop Yakovos, um, uh, Mike Dukakis, the governor of uh, uh, Massachusetts, and uh, Elie Wiesel. Since then, every year, we coordinate uh, with um, uh, the American, the Greek embassy in the United States uh, uh, and the consulates in Chicago and uh, New York. Uh, we coordinate uh, Holocaust uh, remembrance dates uh, uh, that are very, very well attended. The last one uh, a month ago for the known reasons was carried uh, via Zoom and was also very successful. At this one, we featured an exhibit that uh, Jeanette and her team had uh, uh, organized uh, at the Greek, uh, at the Jewish Museum of uh, Greece, uh, the Good Shepherds, and uh, it was very well um, uh, received. But we don't. Uh, we also deal uh, with presentations that have to do with for a lot of Greek Jewish themes, including the history of Greek Jews. Uh, of, but also we participated uh, once uh, in the Ohi Day uh, along with many Greek American organizations and presented colonial freezes and Greek Jewish fighters during the Second World War. By far the most successful exhibit was a, a traveling exhibit, uh, again, an exhibit that was prepared uh, by the Jewish Museum of Greece, uh, the hidden children uh, of the Holocaust of uh, in occupied Greece. This was uh, a traveling exhibit that was featured in many, many states and universities and synagogues around the country. Another exhibit was Synagonistis, uh, uh, dealing with the Greek Jews that participated in the national resistance. And uh, here's my friend Jeanette in uh, the opening of the exhibit in Washington, D.C. But there are cultural events also, as this reception for the movie Cloudy Sunday, which deals with um, uh, Thessaloniki Jews and the Holocaust, and also the by now famous Kisses to the Children, who has been featured in many events and received uh, the highest prize in the Greek um, uh, Film Festival in Chicago some years ago. We also uh, participate in the presentation of uh, books uh, present, prepared by the museum as the uh, guidebook of the museum. And most recently, the corpus that is uh, Jeanette's brainchild. And uh, this was the last actually face-to-face uh, -face event that we had um, a year and a half ago. You're all aware of Archbishop Damaskinos and his, his strong stand against the Germans during occupation. To his honor, we, the American friends of the Jewish Museum of Greece, have created uh, a uh, Damaskinos Humanitarian Award. The first recipient was His Eminence, the former Archbishop Demetrius, and you can see him receiving the award by the president of uh, the Jewish Museum of Greece, Makis Matzas. The Honorable Yanis Boutaris uh, receiving his award. Uh, to the left of the screen is the current president of the American Friends, uh, uh, 
Solomon Nasser, and more recently, um, uh, Ambassador Ronald Loder, president of the World Jewish Congress, received the award for all his uh, uh, strong efforts and support for Jewish education in Greece. And since then, the uh, school in, Greece, in Athens is called the Loder School. You can see him in the inauguration. And let's close by going full circle back in Ioannina. I had visited the city on many occasions in the past. And one time with my late father, who wanted to show us around his hometown and share with us, and particularly with his granddaughters, um, places and stories of his youth. Entering in an empty synagogue with the names of all people murdered during the Holocaust, including many of my family, engraved in plaques on the walls, is always sad and depressing. But I'm grateful to my dear friend, professor and mayor and president of the community, Dr. Moises Elisaf, for inviting me to participate in Yom Kippur in Yanina some years ago. Since then, I became a regular. The synagogue is packed with um, Jewish and non-Jewish uh, people from Greece, Israel, and uh, the United States. And holding this precious and uh, historic Torah is really a wonderful feeling. But above all, above all, listening to ancient prayers is very special. And the sound of the shofar in this particular space is the best memorial for our dead relatives and compatriots. It is our duty and collective obligation to maintain the memory of the Holocaust alive, remind and educate the coming generations and the world about this hideous, premeditated, organized crime, and to fight anti-Semitism and racism wherever we can and wherever we encounter. Thank you very much, Efrain Stoppoli. Thank you so much, Dr. Cohen, for taking us on that journey and really serving as a bridge, I think, um, for director uh, Batinu's story as well um, and giving us the, the US perspective and the, the images that you shared, not only, from, um, not only from the United States, but also taking us full circle back to Yanina. And now Yanina is where we'll come back with our last speaker. And we'll, uh, I am honored to introduce um, Mayor Elisaf. Mayor, the floor is yours. Thank you. Your Excellency, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to thank the United States Ambassador to Greece, as well as the Consul General in Thessaloniki for their honorable invitation to participate in this exciting event in memory of David Tiano, dedicated to the adventurous history of Romanian Jewish community of Ioannina. Thank you so much, Your Excellency, for the invitation, the continued support, encouragement, and our perf perfect collaboration. I would like to thank once again Ms. Zanet Batinu, who born in Ioannina, director of the Jewish Museum of Greece, for her admirable dedication and contribution, and of course, my good friend, Professor Mimi Squen, 
a founding member of the American Friends of the Jewish Museum of Greece and a distinguished member of Iranian diaspora. I would also thank the American Friends of the Jewish Museum of Greece for the continuous and generous support for the preservation and perpetuation of Greek Jewish history. And of course, the Jewish Museum of Greece and its paramount role as a center for exploration, familiarization and positive dialogue between memory and history. It's also an enormous challenge for me since I'm the president of the Jewish community of Ioana for, for approximately the last 20 years, but also I'm for more than one year, the mayor of the city of Ioana, and thus I have a strong commitment to preserve the memory of the city and to make known its rich multicultural past. Ioana for many centuries was the capital the leading Jewish center of the so-called of the so-called Roman Jewry, in other words, the center of the Greek-speaking Jews, whose roots go all the way back to the Hellenistic period. They derived their name from the internal name Romania of the Byzantine Empire. The Jewish community of Ioannina is mentioned since the Byzantine period. In fact, in the decree of the Emperor Antonicus II in the year 1339, freedom and peace was given to the city's Jews. At the beginning of the 20th century, approximately 5,000 Jews lived in Ioannina. However, the first decade of the 20th century, many Jews of Ioannina left the city and moved to Athens. Indeed, the Jews of Ioannina were the first core of the Jewish community of Athens, where the old synagogue is called the Genotiki, or migrated to the United States and Israel, where founded the Keila Kedosai Yanina in New York, but also the Beit Abraham and Ochel Sara synagogue in the Mahane Yoda neighborhood in Jerusalem. The community was treated reasonably under the Ottoman Empire, was well incorporated in the city life throughout many centuries, and especially after the city liberation from the Ottoman Empire, 1933. Thus the Jews responded to all military needs of their country. Ioana became part of the Greek state after the successful ending of the Balkan Wars. The Jews of the city play an active part in the social and political life of the local society and in that of the country as a whole. They were on good terms with their Ottoman for the, with their Christian fellow citizens, sharing joys and sorrows, hopes and difficulties, while also maintaining their strong Jews, Jewish identity through particular aspects of their everyday life. Joseph Elia, the poet and the intellectual of Jewish descent of his time, was a true child of the socio-political changes which marked the 20s and made his name as the ideal representative of the interaction between the Greek civilization and the Jewish tradition. Jews of Ioannina used Greek as their everyday language of communication from the moment they settled. They were inspired by the local culture and customs and were, and, and were versatile enough to blend them with their own to create the unique Greek-Jewish tradition. Their distinct language was Judeo-Greek or Javanic, a Greek dialect that contained Hebrew along with some Aramaic and Turkish words. However, they retained religious identity as can be seen in the synagogues they built and a distinct form of religious observance they maintain. Even though with the arrival of the Sephardi in the late 15th century, most Roman communities were absorbed into the culture of the Sephardi, even a community along with some other communities of Epirus, Peloponnese and Creek retained their Romano tradition. Instead, the Sephardi Jews settled in Ioannina were assimilated into the Romano population. During the German occupation, approximately 2,000 Jews 
lived in the city. When the Axis forces gained control in Greece, 1941, Ioannina came under Italian administration, which took, took no measures against the Jews and granted many permits to the Jews who wanted to live for Athens. In July, oh, cut, cut Okay. We can hear you. You're okay. okay. Sorry. In July 1943, the German division with Colonel von Stettner in charge arrived at the city and immediately exerted pressure on the Jewish population. A few people, mainly young men, took to the mountains and joined resistance forces. Few Ioannina Christians, ordinary people, officials and clergy stood by their persecuted fellow townspeople. On March 25, 1944, the remaining 1,870 Romanian Jews were taken through the snow in 97 covered trucks via Tricola to Larissa, and from there they were carried to trains and transported to Auschwitz Birkenau. 92% of the Roman Jews of Ioannina were exterminated in the Nazi camps. When the Second World War ended, the Jewish community of Ioannina numbers 181 souls, 112 people who survived the genocide and 69 who saved themselves by hiding or taking to the mountains. The problems noticed during the return of the survivors in the city should also be discussed. The, the returnees found their homes occupied. Many Jews' homes were occupied by squatters who were reluctant to vacate their rent-free accommodations. Many other Jewish homes were commanded by the Iranian authorities to house refugees from the Greek Civil War. Owners or the surviving relatives of the owners had to appeal to the courts for their property. This took time, even though laws had been passed to help the returning Jewish survivors. In many cases, the courts supported Greek Christian to cl claims to Jewish property. Many of the survivors emigrated to the United States or Israel, but never lost touch with their hometown. The constant support of New York-based societies of Jewish immigrants to the United States from Ioannina, such as Yanina Relief Fund, the Brotherhood and Sister of Ioannina, and of course, Keilake Dosha Yanina, is not worthy and bears witness to the sense of belonging and community spirits which common roots produce. Thus, the Roman New Jews all over the world hope that through their efforts and dedication, something of their legacy will survive in the real world and we will do our best to accomplish this challenge. Professor Cohen, whose marvelous talk we enjoyed, is a unique, vivid example which clearly shows the successful career of a Romaniot in the States, but also the dedication of Romaniots in their new country to the preservation of the valuable tradition of the Iwanina Romaniot Judaism. Every year, under difficult circumstances, our community celebrates Yom Kippur with the traditional Romanian style. Hundreds of Yanyotes from Greece, Israel, Canada, United States, and even Australia come and fill the Ioannina synagogue. Thus, our community is still alive, is not extinct yet. Preservation of the Romanian tradition isn't just preserving the past we are investing in our future. Thank you once again for giving me the opportunity to briefly present the history of our community and discuss with you the challenges of preserving the memory of your community today in a rapidly changing city like Ioannina. Thank you so much for your attention.
Mayor Alisov, thank you so much for what I think is, I know that the history is much longer, but I think you still gave a very comprehensive while succinct overview of, of some of the history of Yanina. So thank you very much. Um, we're at time right now, but I, I see that we have a very active chat and I, I'd like to continue um, the conversation by asking some questions from the audience chat and reward the patience of those who've been, uh, who've been following us since the beginning. And, and thank you again for joining us today. So um, while we won't be able to get to all of the, uh, all of the questions, um, let me start by asking one from a, a reporter, Patricia Klaus uh, the, from the Greek Reporter newspaper asks, what can be done today to root out anti-Semitism in Greece today? So many seem to still believe that Greek Jews whose ancestors lived in Greece for more than 500 years are still quote unquote, not Greek. Can this mindset ever be defeated? So uh, maybe I, uh, what I'd like to do is, I'd like to have the, uh, the panelists address that question, perhaps uh, one by one. Let me start with, um, let's see. Let me start with Director Batinu. Would you like to begin? Yes, thank you. Um, it's my firm belief, and that's what drives the work of the museum as well, that the way to do this is through information and education, offering opportunities for people to hear and to learn and to understand and to get to know. This is the only way um, to challenge these beliefs and the ignorance that feeds them. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Dr. Dr. Cohen, do you have any words? I will echo uh, what Janet said, but also let's not forget that the antisemitism is not a Greek disease, it's an international disease. And we have to do whatever it takes to fight racism, antisemitism, just not start a political discussion, just a month ago in the United States Capitol, there were people wearing T-shirts with uh, Camp Auschwitz and uh, six million were not enough. This is unacceptable. And uh, it is up to the everybody to fight it at their level and also governments to take a strong stand and raise uh, some important uh, red lines. There is freedom of information and people can do and say a lot of things, but there has to be a limit. And I think uh, the direction of education and international participation is what is absolutely necessary. Thank you. Thank you very much, Doctor. I'd like to now uh, turn to the mayor if he has a few words. As I told before, our uh, primary challenge is the preservation of the rich Jewish tradition in our city, the Romanian tradition, and also the preservation of the monuments, especially the historical uh, synagogue. Also, uh, the historical uh, memory of the Holocaust is of paramount importance. And both as a president of the community and as a mayor, I have uh, to uh, work tentatively on this. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Um, okay, so I'd like to move on to the next question. And I think that this question is very similar to another question that was asked, and it's a question regarding archeology. span Are there any physical um, archeological traces that survive of the Yanina Romanio community from Hellenistic or Roman imperial times? 
And on a practical note, will the recording be available perhaps at the sites of the American Embassy or Thessaloniki Consulate? Absolutely, it will be. And uh, we will we'll put it up on our feed as, as soon as it is. Thank you for that. But Mayor, uh, let's go in reverse. Why don't we start with you? Uh, I, I think that Zanek has clearly uh, described a tomb in the, Sina, in the cemetery from the 15th century. I think that it is the ancient uh, Jewish uh, monument in our city. If I'm wrong, if I'm wrong, Zanet can uh, uh, tell more about it, but I don't know that if there is something uh, uh, from the Hellenistic period in our city not only uh, of the Jewish community, but also of the history of the city. Okay, great. Why don't we turn to Zanet then, um, if you have any uh, insights as an archaeologist. Unfortunately, there isn't anything from that early period. As uh, Dr. Elisaf said, the earliest monument of the community is that particular tombstone that I showed in my presentation, um, which is dating from the early a first quarter of the 15th century. Um, earlier than that, which is a document, also counts as an archeological, as archeological evidence, is the Chrysovulo uh, that I mentioned of Andronikos II Paleologos, which is of the end of the 14th century. Um, and that is the earliest concrete evidence um, of a, a Jewish presence in Yanina. Although lore has it that there was a synagogue in the eighth or the ninth century common era, um, and it is believed that even an inscription from that will, could be seen until later times. But unfortunately, that cannot be proved anymore today. Thank you very much for that. Um, and Dr. Uh, Dr. Cohen, do you have any words that you'd like to add to that? Well, I'm not a historian or, or an archeologist, but one thing is for sure, the city of Ioannina was established around the 9th or 10th century. Uh, so yes, Jeannette published a beautiful book of Greek Jewish inscriptions for 2000 years ago, but Ioannina didn't exist back then. So asking for archeological uh, proof is, is, is not appropriate. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I'd like to end with a final question by Gabriela Etemetsoglu, um, who asks, according to a Pew survey of 2019, 38% of Greeks have an unfavorable view of Jews in their country, the highest percentage in all of the EU. In your view, which aspects of the official Greek narrative um, regarding World War II and the post-war years contribute to the perpetuation of anti-Semitism in Greece? And what concrete additional measures do you suggest should be taken to deconstruct slash revise elements of this narrative? By additional, I refer to, for example, on expanding the, on the crucial work already done by uh, Dr. Batinou at the Jewish Museum of Greece and through IRA. Um, so why don't we start with, well, this is um, Dr. Bat, no, I'm sorry, Director Batinou has mentioned directly. Why don't we start with her, please? Um, I know uh, the historian, uh, Dr. McToglu, thank you for the doctorate. I'm not, uh, I don't, I'm not worth it. I'm just a plain miss. But uh, um, I think that great strides have been made in the past few years in um, broadening and deepening this narrative um, and including uh, personal histories, um, more accounts, views, views, broader views of the historical community. Um, and I think we are moving in a good way uh, to presenting a broader narrative that can serve to um, heal all those gaps and all those uh, prejudices um, of the past. I'm by nature a um, optimistic person and I prefer to see the glass half full. And I will go back to education 
our programs, uh, many programs that happen in Greece, many initiatives um, are, are designed to address um, all these very hard issues uh, that um, give trouble to our societies today because of course anti-Semitism is a societal problem. It's not a Jewish problem. It's a problem of the society at large. And as very correctly, uh, Dr. Cohen said of all societies and not just the Greek society. Um, so I believe in being proactive. I believe in putting the word out there of what really happened, of what the issues really are, of what the truth of the past is on which we need to step on in order to go and be launched into a better future. Um, so this is it, education, information, an open mind, and getting to know your neighbor. Thank you very much, Director Batino. I think very, very well said. Um, so uh, do, either, uh, do either Mayor Elisov or Dr. Cohen, um, do you have any words? Otherwise, I'll go to our closing. Okay. All right. So um, I would be remiss, however, if I didn't read a very special comment. So let me read that out loud for all of those who may have missed this. This is from Isidoro Stiano to all the panelists and attendees. Congratulations for a professional and well-organized presentation. Thank you to all. There are five Tianos attending this presentation. Isidoro Samuel Tiano from Columbus, Ohio and Athens, Greece and Isidoro Simontiano from Thessaloniki, Greece, as well as Zanitz and my children, Linda, Samuel, and Joseph Tiano from Athens, Greece. We're honored that you have chosen to honor our David Tiano relative in his memory. Aristopoli, thank you so much for attending here today and for your very warm words. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for having us. Truly a special occasion tonight. No, thank you. The honor is ours. So, um, I'd like to thank our speakers today, uh, Ms. Batinou. Thank you so much for the invitation. No, thank you for accepting it. Um, I'd like to thank all of you, our speakers, for uh, the opportunity to learn more about the Romanio community of Greece and the deep bonds that connect the community to the United States. We truly appreciated the knowledge, the insights, and your personal stories that you shared with us today. And we're looking forward to other opportunities in the future to learn more. And I see already from the chat that you have some invitations already to, to speak at different venues. So that's wonderful. Um, I'm very proud that the consulate has organized this event for the past 15 years. I'm very happy that many of our audience members tonight were able to join for the first time. For those of you who would like to see the event again or share it with someone who'd love to watch it, uh, we're gonna make a, a recording available as I said to the consulate and embassy social media shortly. So with that, I'd like to thank you all for joining and we hope to see you again next year. Faristo Parapoli and good night. Thank you. Thank you.